Hi there everybody, it's Rich here with another fast and fun video. And in this week's video, I'm doing something that I rarely do. I'm taking a look at a modified Mark II Golf GTI. And not just slightly modified, but heavily modified. And some of you will immediately know that this isn't a Mark II GTI shell. In fact, it comes off a 1.3 or 1.4 CL donor vehicle but has got a Mark III GTI engine in it. And I'm gonna take a look at this because I am, if you've noticed previous videos in my channel, I generally talk about OEM spec, leave the cars as standard. Well, this is at the polar opposite. This is not minor changes. This is a significant restoration to put this GTI engine from the Mark III into this Mark II body shell and all the work and time and money that's gone into this. Let's take a look in this week at this heavily modified Mark II GTI. So where do I start? Well, this is a, um, a body shell from a, I think it was a 1.3 L or CL from the um, mid eighties. And what they've done, they've took that donor shell, they've stripped it, they've, they've done a full restoration on it. And then they've, they've sourced a Mark III Golf GTI engine and put that in the front. And we're gonna take a look at that. I think the first couple of things to notice from a distance is, well, um, is the color. Um, and I have to say this very deep, reddy, orange colour absolutely sets this, this car off wonderfully well. Um, it's really, really eye-catching. Um, uh, the, the, the purists will absolutely see that this is not uh, um, a Mark II GTI with its twin circular headlights, the, having single ones on this car. But that, I think, adds to the look here of this, of this, modified, this modified Golf. The other thing to notice is um, the, the effect that's been put on the top, this carbon effect roof panel. Um, and again, it gives it a sort of a unique feature, I think. If you get a little bit close, you can see it's, it's actually just sort of carbon effect that's been wrapped around the top of the, of the roof. But I think it works quite well. Um, and then again, the other thing to look at is the, the, the alloys and um, the ride height it's incredibly low to the ground this if we if we take a look at this front alloy the, the 15 inches um, they are um, equipped work alloys um, wrapped with tail proxies t1rs um, they're running 19545 and you can see how they are stretched over the alloy um, um, hugely actually um, to give it that appearance and look at how close <laughs> this is now I spoke to the owner of this and you can see actually a very slight crack there and um, he's he's had he's owned the car now for two or three months and um, he's he's gonna think raise the the ride height if you look at the rear um, here you can see it's very there's so little space there so he's just gonna up it slightly just get a little bit more clearance um, to to the to the car um, let's take a look at the back more of a traditional mark II golf back as well there um, as we just take a look around the car then we'll we'll have a look inside and specifically the bonnet because that's the piece de resistance um, you can see the it's been kept it's been bad still they've left the original golf c on it, I say I think it came off a 1.3 C or CL car. You can just see that the carbon effect roof panel there as well. 
fantastic looking retro car. Let's take a look inside the car. So you've got a real mixture here um, of both um, original, modern. So if you look at the dash, first of all, um, the dash itself pretty much as it left the factory in the mid eighties, the standard dash there, obviously negating the radio. It has a um, Nardi steering wheel. Um, and then I think you've got this open gated, uh, extremely short shift, which I'll show you when we go for the drive um, gear stick there, all the open cabling as well being routed straight into the engine bay. Fantastic looking, almost work of art really. Seeing the linkages move when you're driving, fabulous. You take a look at the door panels. These are original, again, as they left the factory with the windy, windy windows and the, and the, um, the, 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 the cable pull to, to adjust the wing mirrors, fantastic. But largely the inside is dominated by these two fixed back Cobra seats. And I think the owner's done a great job here because what he's managed to do, he's got the, 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 the tartan um, look on these Cobra seats, which is absolutely reminiscent of sort of Volkswagen, Porsche, lots of German marks in the 80s and 90s. And it really sets off that, the, the inside of the cabin brilliantly. It's a, it's a it's the, the mix of old, new, um, and original. Does it work as a, a standard Mark II? Well, it's difficult to say, I suppose. Um, myself being more of say, the purist, but I have to say, um, the, the, the seats and the gear stick really do set it off. Let's have a look at the back because there's a few more things that have been done to the back of the car, which is easier to see from the boot. So, <clears throat> in the boot, a couple of obvious things there, you'll see that it is a, rear seats have been stripped out and they decided to go for a bolt-in half cage. Um, and I think that was the right decision with regard to half cage rather than full cage. I just think as road going cars, full cages are incredibly difficult to keep getting in and out of. If you want a cage, this half cage is bolt in, um, um, seems to do the, the trick. And then the rest of it is largely, as I say, ripped out, empty, empty space. There's a few bits of detail that I think the current owner can have a look at. Just um, things for him to continue to get this into a sort of a, a, a more of a showroom condition because it was really designed as a, as a bit of a show car as well. But there's a few, there's a few bits and pieces here in the back. You'll see when we have a look under the bonnet as well, that there behind the passenger seat is the, is the relocation of the battery. And the reason for that is because the owner wanted the, um, wanted the bonnet, uh, the engine bay to look um, um, minimalistic, shall we say. Let's take a look at the, um, at the bonnet now under the bonnet. And I think this is the, this is the party piece for me. Now you, you see, I have to go and get a, screwdriver because um, I have to the catch is actually inside this Volkswagen piece so I'm just going to put the camera down while we do this So here we have the, the engine bay and wow, what does that look like? Um, quite an incredible sight really. Uh, dominated, well, a couple of things that uh, really, really struck me when I first looked at it was the absolute minimalistic way that it's been put into. Anything that's not needed has been removed. So things like a lot of the electrics um, have been sort of hidden away Battery's gone behind the passenger seat. The expansion tank has been removed, uh, <coughs> which obviously does cause some coolant issues and you've got to keep an eye out on the coolant apparently. Um, and then the other 
I think evident piece is these 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 trumpets, which are which which are just well they're, they're so noisy you'll hear it when I start it up. Um, they really dominate the look of this this engine, and you've got the throttle butterfly valve, and you can see inside here as I. I don't know if you can see that there, they're just the butterfly valve. So um, with the fuel injectors just right the other side, um, going straight into the engine. So it make, causes a huge induction noise here. There are muffles. Um, I'll just go and see if I can find one. Yeah, so these are, this is a muffle here um, that you can just put over the top of the trumpet really. Um, and that just sort of keeps the sound down at more of a manageable level. Uh, but say so this is a it's a GTI engine from a Mark Golf Mark III, um, and yeah, what a what a work of art. <laughs> wow. Um, well, the first thing you feel like when you get in this car is these fixed back Cobra seats and and uh, the steering wheel's right on you. Feels like you're in a, about to start a touring car race with the gear stick. I know it's not quite in shot, but it's literally just to the left of the steering wheel. So it, it feels fantastic. So um, here we go. Uh, apart from I can't start the car for some reason. Okay. I don't know how the sound or vibration is going to be on the camera. Um, it's incredibly noisy in here. Um, so I'm hoping that this new, these new mics that I'm using um, will uh, dampen some of, the, some of the noise, but it's incredibly, incredibly noisy. And the whole car is sort of vibrating because the suspension's so <laughs> firm. So um, let's see what this is going to be like. The gear stick is it probably is a centimetre. It's half an inch from neutral into first. Uh, second, yeah, literally, I'm probably going a centimetre. Half an inch from first into neutral, then another half inch back into second. So, incredibly, incredibly short throw. So here we go. Um, just trying to pull away gently, and it's just deafening. I almost need ear defenders on. I don't know how this is gonna be. so noisy it's so it's vibrating it's banging i'm not sure there's any springs and dampers in the car i think it's just i think the wheels just bolted straight to the chassis <laughs> what a bloody car right i'm just going to go back i'm going to get my son to come in because although i've got my clamps and my gyros and my gimbals and stuff that the camera is absolutely all over the place and um, so I'm going to get him to come in the passenger seat and actually video it from his hand so at least his hand will be able to absorb some of these vibrations because it is literally it's almost shaking itself to pieces this car it's so firm and um, right give me five minutes <laughs> right here we go for the second version um, I've got my lad with me now just to as cameraman because it's just literally this thing just shakes and vibrates like no other car. Right, here we go for a, it's almost, everyone's looking because it's so flipping noisy. Oh, the, the, the popping and banging of the exhaust. God, it, it borders on embarrassing to, uh, to a degree. Um, so, well, first things to notice is uh, avoid any bump, crease, pothole, anything in the road because the suspension is so firm. 
and it's probably advisable to wear ear, <laughs> ear defenders, it's so loud. Um, I'm just a little, just feathering the throttle here and it's still really noisy. I'll go past these houses before I just open them up and get the engine nice and warm. Um, I'm not sure what's coming through actually um, in regard to sound, but it is, I'd love to know what the decibels are, but it's, it's seriously loud. turning here. I, I love the gearbox. I mean I've only been driving it a few miles. And performance is not brilliant. It's it's the noise is 10 out of 10. The performance is probably 6 or 7 out of 10. The steering's actually pretty good as well. The pedals are nicely positioned. Just trying to find a gear. And the gear stick is an absolute delight. You come, oh, you come off the steering wheel and you're straight into that, into, into, straight onto the gear stick. And it shifts so well. It really does. I'm missing that sort of the left foot, foot rest, which I, annoys me when car manufacturers don't put something there for you to rest your left foot and do you know what the, the, the simple layout of the dash with the revs revs on the right hand side and the speedo on the left the sort of the analog look I like it rather than a lot of this digital dashes now we're going to it's just all I can hear is just constant popping and banging I'm not on the accelerators we're going down the hill Obviously, it's all the un unburnt fuel. Oh, you're just trying to avoid every single bump and a pothole on the road. Oh dear. This is a bit of a smoother road here. There's something that makes you smile, there's something that makes you laugh and joke. It's just constantly popping and banging in the back. Wow. What a what a what a car to get attention. I think talking about how loud it is, it's incidentally that the sun who's a teenager late teenager um, he thinks the sounds absolutely awesome so the loudness where you can't speak to each other without shouting is um, it's clearly a generation thing and perhaps I am showing my age with regard to how loud this car is So what's my summary of this heavily modified Mark II Golf? Well, um, it's incredibly loud and it's incredibly noisy. The suspension is incredibly firm um, and it attracts tension probably like no other car has ever attracted tension to me. And whether that's driving it or whether it's actually just parked up where people just have just come and asked me about the car because Mark Two golfs now getting quite rare on the road and especially offset by this, I have to say, magnificent colour. I mean, I don't know what this reddy orange fiery colour I think is, is absolutely sets it off brilliantly. Um, it's obviously a weekend car. Um, it's a car to take to some shows, the V-dub shows, and I think the following that Volkswagen have managed to create over generations really or certainly decades 
with which started probably back in the Beatle days and 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 then the camper vans and and the golfs and they have such a strong um, following that that this is a it's a sure fire um, investment for me um, cars like this um, probably not a car for myself which is probably not surprising with my purist liking it to be boring and standard I suppose but I have to say if you're going to modify a car then let's go right to the far right hand side the full arc of doing a full restoration swapping things in and I think the, 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 whoever's done this has done a fantastic job I think I love those Cobra tartan seats it, they really dominate the inside and that open gearbox looks at on that stick shift looks absolutely fantastic um, and I think as I say it's a, it's a surefire winner and a real head turner I hope you enjoyed the video if you did like always please give me the thumbs up please also subscribe which will be down here somewhere and stay tuned because there'll be another video coming up really really soon